Hey everybody, so these pieces that you're looking at here with me are to the Marshmallow Blaster. I picked one up at a uh, thrift store, I don't remember which one. I want to say it was a Savers. And I just about tested it out and blew out the <clears throat> insides. Um, I tried to put it back together without taking it apart and did it wrong. So this time around I took it apart completely to kind of see how it works and also fix it hopefully. Um, I was able to successfully fix it so I kind of want to go over it <clears throat> with you just in case you pick up a blaster just like this and also want to see how it works internally and it might be a little too um, uh, cautious to open it up but uh, being a modder that I am I'm less cautious about opening anything up. I've been doing that since I was a kid. So. Um, Here's the blaster uh, air tank. It is somewhat stiff, but still a bit flexible. It has the grooves here as it will cap onto this portion right here, which acts as the barrel. And you can see here, I'm gonna be putting this on. I'll take that off for now, but this is the barrel. It did come with a uh, grill here, but I have since clipped that grill off and shaved this down so it's nice and smooth. Um, so what we're going to be going over is kind of how this works, how to put it together correctly um, so that you don't make some of the mistakes I did when I was trying to do this. <coughs> now, some of the important pieces here. So this is the plunger portion. This is the tank. This is the barrel, as I had mentioned, threaded. There is a piece in here that does come out if you push these two together and pull that out. You can see here that it has a T on it, but it is an uneven T. One side is longer than the other. That's going to be important. If you see the top left right there is a little bit longer than the others. Um, that's because this is very specific on its orientation. This would be the sheath for the breech, um, which really no modifications at this point. This is just going to sit there. Um, this is not included in the blaster. We'll talk about that later. This is the important piece. This is the piece that, as you can see here, has the cross as well, but hopefully you can see one piece of this um, cross is longer than the other. Let me put it in this orientation. You can see that the upper left is longer than the others. That's the correct orientation because it's very specific. If you look here, these three are the same, but this is different. This is a little bit longer. And if you look in here, you'll see that that portion is open, whereas these are closed. That's very important <clears throat> because that's where the trigger catch, which is what this is, I'm gonna call it a trigger catch. Um, this is where this goes. So you can see there's angled grooves here. If it were here, it would not be able to fit in, but if it was here, it will be able to fit in. And this is where it goes. This is a portion of the trigger, a piece of the trigger that holds this in place. Now what happens here, is, and here's the gasket, so this is another part of it. One side has smoother inner rings, and the other one actually has a little bit of an inner ring, and it goes out this way. What happens is this, as the air pressure builds up, wants to push the air right here, just like this. The air wants to come out of here, but what happens is this piece pushes this back and closes it so that the air cannot escape out of the tank. This piece right here is what holds this, uh, I don't know what to call it, but this plug, we'll call it a plug. This, this piece of the trigger is what holds this plug in place and keeps it from going out. Because when this opens, then the air will vent out and it will go out the barrel. Now, when this is in place like this, like I mentioned, this will hold it in place. Uh, Orientation is a little wrong here, but this will hold it in place just like this. And then as soon as you pull this pin out of the way with the trigger, it will then allow this to move out of the way and open up that hole. This moves because it is actually spring, uh, spring loaded. So the spring pushes it back, that trigger catch holds it in place. As soon as it's out, the air pressure overcomes it and it pushes it open this way. Once that opens, you'll see a gap just like this and all the air is now rushing out of the, uh, of the tank and out the barrel. <clears throat> so 
So this is why orientation is important because there's only one side that fits um, for the trigger catch, which is right here. Now, on the barrel, you'll see that everything somewhat looks the same except for here. This right here is where the trigger catch goes into. And that's where it needs to make that contact. So it's only got to be in one orientation. Now, hopefully yours stays in there. Mine did not. Um, and it popped out. And I also wanted to take it completely apart so it popped out. I'm not going to do that right now because I already lost one of the springs. Very heavy duty spring, by the way. But I did have uh, a bunch of springs to replace it. So I found one and replaced it. And I'm going to go ahead and take this. And this is the part that's going to go where the opening is, but also if you look again, this is the orientation of where the longer part of this cross is. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to install this, and it's going to be really difficult to do on camera, but I will try, and it's got to go into that cross piece. Any other orientation and this will not fit, and you're going to get a jam, or you're just going to get it stuck in there like I did. Um, but in the correct orientation, it will, as soon as I get it in there, I'm missing the hole, there it is. Okay, so in the correct orientation, this moves freely. You can see it from this side. You can kind of see right there, the piston moving in and out, the peg moving in and out, sorry, of this. So this is free floating at this point. And we take this end piece and we look for the one with the multiple ridges, not the flat one. We'll put the flat one down and then we'll push it all the way down into its ridges here. There we go. And as you can see here, it's holding the pressure on its own because there's not much air pressure. When there's enough air pressure, this will release and all the air will rush out. Now, this is the peg as I mentioned and it's going to go in this way. I'm not 100% which way it goes, but I've been putting it in this way, the slope down. So I've been doing it that way, uh, and that's the way I'm going to do it here as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other pieces included. And here, and here, and here. So what we have here is the uh, handle portion, which consists of two halves, a torsion spring. This torsion spring is very specific. It has a smaller hook here, a fulcrum area here, and a pin. This all corresponds with the trigger as well, which also has a large hole here and a smaller hole there where the pin goes and a little rest for the spring to fall into. So it's all going to go into place just like that. Now on this shell, you're going to see a small peg here a large one there and that's how this is gonna go the small peg here and the larger one there <clears throat> okay then we take this and we put it with the holes we lined it up in the holes there we go great and so now the trigger is correctly set up so you can see here how it moves and when we put this in there in this orientation you can kind of see how this trigger will pull down on the pin which will release the um it'll release the uh the little plug here so first things first let's go ahead and screw this back on There we go. So there it is. It's screwed back on. Um, that's all there is to this piece. And now we're going to do a little tricky part. It's even trickier on camera, which is putting this all back into place. So it's got to go in that hole. All right, so it's in that hole, it's in this peg, everything's ready and set. Then we go ahead and take this and we close her up, just like that. And we take our screwdriver 
and we'll go ahead and screw everything back on. I'm going to go ahead and uh, pause right here since all I'm going to do is screw. Okay, so now the blaster is put back together correctly. Um, the only thing that is not on is the um, breech portion right now, but this is pretty much functional as is. Um, without this grill here, uh, it still shouldn't be a problem to shoot actual marshmallows of the correct size. I think you should still be able to do it. Um, let's go ahead and give it a few test pumps. Just put in three. One, two, three. And if we pull the trigger, it should blow out some air. And it does. Good. So this uh, will take about 15 to 20 pumps to max out, which is still pretty heavy. And... Um, yeah, that's about it for servicing the Marshmallow Blaster. What I'm going to go ahead and do next um, is just very quickly, it should be reserved for a modification guy, but really this is so simple. Um, just taking a half inch coupler here that I've cut down and put E-tape on. What I'm going to go ahead and do since I've already sized the E-tape here is to get some uh, adhesive and just kind of tape it all up. I'm sorry, glue it all up, stick it in there and let it sit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and attached this already. It's no longer sticky as I've let it dry. Um, but this is the coupler that will be going into the front here, and as you can see, it's nice and flush. It does not really affect anything if you wanted to still maintain this as a um, uh, marshmallow blaster. So you can still see it's still here. It still opens up. You can still pull the breech open. You can still stuff a marshmallow in there. You can still close it and it is still fully functional, so no issues there. But what we are going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and run this with a uh, RSCB. So this is just a typical RSCB that I have. It fits about six or seven step in length darts. And we'll just stick it into the front here. Make sure it's nice and tight. Good. Okay, so this is it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the angle of this camera, and we'll go ahead and do some test firing. Okay, so I've got the uh, Marshmallow Blaster here all uh, geared up with the uh, RSCB. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put in a few stuff and light darts into here. We're going to go ahead and do a firing demonstration, and uh, we'll use the last one for a chronograph test. So what I've got here first is the yellow glue dome and uh, BB. Then we're going to go ahead and use this blue cut down bleat dart. Then let's go ahead and use a green hot dome BB. Actually that's just, yeah that's the silicone tip and BB. Um, and then we'll just go ahead and end it with uh, a prototype dart. So here we go. This should hold about what was that, four in there, plus three, so it should hold about seven. So we're going to go ahead and give it about, uh, about ten plus seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Hard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Securing the barrels. <clears throat> so lesson learned this is uh, something you should do which is securing the barrel material <coughs> um, I actually just it's all twist fitted in there because I'll change out the barrel length I'll also change out the uh, clip length so uh, I guess I just didn't tighten that one one two three four five six seven eight five ten so one thing I've noticed by the way is with this blaster sometimes you pump it and the air does still pop out, which is kind of annoying. It doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it pops off on you. So here we go. There's the uh, last one, which is the prototype dart. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to take that prototype dart. And I'm going to go ahead and take this prototype dart. This is now, if you can see here. Well, you can see, maybe not see. You can see me in there. So this is an empty clip right now. This is a completely empty clip. And I'm going to put one dart in an empty clip. The reason for that is because I want to see what the worst performance will be with an RSCB on this. So we're going to pump this up 15 times. Okay. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 times. We are going to take this uh, photograph, we're going to turn it on first, that would be important. And I'm going to go ahead and fire it, and we'll see what kind of uh, performance we get. 193. So, not too bad. 193 out of an empty RSCB with 15 pumps. Um, so yeah, there it is. I've definitely broken over 200 with this. Pump it some more easily breaking that. But with an empty RSCB at 15 pumps, I think that's pretty darn good. Um, so that's it for the uh, Marshmallow Blaster. Thank you guys for watching, and um, I hope you learned something. They're fun.